Chair recognizes the gentleman from Kentucky. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the further consideration of H.J. Res. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for as much time as he may consume. The gentleman will suspend. The House will be in order. The gentleman from Kentucky is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move forward with H.J. Res. 59, the continuing resolution that will keep the doors of the government open after the end of the fiscal year on Monday. It's unfortunate that yet again we are in this situation, facing yet another sh shutdown showdown, with no solution to our many fiscal problems in sight. Funding the government with a continuing resolution should not be Plan A. Plan B, even Plan Z. But our challenges are many. Our timeline is short, so passing this CR today is absolutely essential. The House passed a version of this bill last Friday. The Senate amended it, sent it back to us to consider it again. The motion before us agrees to the Senate amendments with two further amendments, one delaying Obamacare for a year and one repealing the medical device tax. Included in each amendment are three changes that I've requested. The first change is the date back to the House passed end date of the CR of December 15th to give us more time to pass the fiscal uh, 014 appropriations bills. I've been flexible on this issue from the very beginning, but this longer time frame will help us avoid the potential need for another CR in the interim. The second change would make a technical change to an anomaly for the Eisenhower Commission added by the Senate. This change will simply continue the status quo of a hold on that project. And finally, the third will add a new anomaly to extend the authority for the United States to issue special immigrant visas for the length of the CR. This authority is necessary to ensure that the visas continue for Iraqis who assisted the U.S. during the war, many of whom put their lives on the line to do so. It's become clear that since this CR was first introduced, that this new provision has wide bipartisan support. Mr. Speaker, one of our primary jobs as members of Congress is to provide our people with important programs and services only the federal government can provide and to ensure that these services are available. This bill does that. However, it's also our responsibility to address the nation's fiscal challenges head on with a realistic and pragmatic approach that will allow for attainable solutions. With the debt ceiling looming, a fragile economy in recovery, and the threat of additional draconian sequestration cuts that will gut our national defense, it's essential that we come together to find common ground. One side cannot do it alone. And inaction or failure on these crucial issues could lead to disastrous results for our people and our nation for years to come. Let me take a moment now to remind us all of just a few of the consequences if the government were to shut down. Our troops will not be paid, and national security will be put at risk. Our borders will weaken. Our most vulnerable citizens, the elderly, and our veterans may not get the assistance they rely upon. Our businesses facing great uncertainty will take a hit. 
our economy will suffer. We must act responsibly to keep our government open and our country on stable economic footing. Now and in the near future, we must also act, act as productive partners to keep the nation safe, provide our people with essential services, rein in unsustainable entitlement programs, and secure a responsible and realistic federal budget. And we must remember that we do this not just for our and our districts, but we do it for the nation as a whole. I hope that today, with the countdown to shutdown, uh, shutdown clocks ticking away, that my colleagues will understand that funding the government is one of those essential duties. And I ask you to vote yes on this continuing resolution. I reserve. General reserves his time. The gentlelady from New York is recognized. Mr.